Welcome back to the news this week. Those that have resumed business, congratulations and I hope you're staying safe. Not so good news at Telesel as it is reported that they are cutting employees' salaries to 800 SIM dollars due to the reduction in revenue from lockdowns warranted by COVID-19. Telesel also issued out a statement dismissing claims that it's shutting down. These rumors came from a newspaper article dated March 2015 that was making rounds on social media with headlines suggesting Telesel is now shutting down. RBZ ordered banks to freeze bank accounts linked to EcoCash and OneMoney accounts suspected of trading in Forex on the black market. This is not the first time the RBZ has gone this route and a number of people are convinced that it will yield the same results as previous times. The government also effected SI80 which highlights that every money transaction provider and banking provider is required to connect to the national payment switch for purposes of interoperability. Interoperability being referred to is being able to send or receive mobile money between EcoCash, Telecash and OneMoney without the need to go via a bank amongst other transactions. DSTV announced a new price adjustment starting the 1st of June which will be the first time they have raised fees for their service in 4 years. The increase has been blamed on the tax increase to 14.5% and subscribers will see some bouquet prices jump up by up to 12 US dollars. NetOne also raised the price for their data bundles and yesterday they increased prices for their very attractive Wi-Fi data packages. This came about 24 hours after Econet had increased its data prices and doubled the price of its once also equally attractive private Wi-Fi bouquet. Regardless, they have also come through with cheaper e-learning bundles to make e-learning a bit more attainable to a larger number of students. However, not everyone can just buy the bundles as they are going to be distributed through school and university admins. Econet founder Strive Masiwa was also appointed by the African Union chairman and president of South Africa to improve supply of personal protective equipment during the COVID-19 crisis. That's all for the news this week. See you again next week.